Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at everyone's favorite, the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle. So take your pick and let's go. The best place to begin is a quick recap of glycolysis. And in the process of glycolysis, we simply took a six carbon molecule called glucose. In actual fact, it's C6H12O6. And the whole purpose of glucose is to pull it apart, rearrange it to pull off hydrogen and electrons. And in this process of going from glucose down to two, three carbon molecules called pyruvate, again, this process is known as glycolysis. Feel free to watch the glycolysis video that I've recorded. In this process, multiple steps, we ultimately produced two molecules of NADH and two molecules of ATP. Now the whole purpose of this cellular respiration, so glycolysis, Krebs cycle, then the electron transport chain is to produce ATP either directly or to produce ATP indirectly via NADH or FADH2. I'll talk about that in a second. So this is our net gain from the process of glycolysis. Keep that in mind. Now we've created a three carbon molecule called pyruvate. In actual fact, we've created two of them from one glucose molecule. And this pyruvate wants to enter the mitochondria so it can enter the Krebs cycle. The mitochondria has an inner and outer membrane. It can't get through. It needs to be transformed into something that can. This is the product here. It's called acetyl-CoA. So we've got acetyl-CoA that pyruvate needs to turn into. How does pyruvate do this? Well, as you can see, it goes from being a three carbon molecule to a two carbon molecule. So it needs to lose a carbon. Second thing is it needs to add a CoA as well. Why do we snap CoA? So CoA is coenzyme A. Why do we need that? Well, it's a coenzyme. So when it's added to carbon chains, it helps transport that carbon molecule and facilitate that carbon molecule by being utilized by an enzyme. In this process, snapping the CoA allows the acetyl to enter the mitochondria and be utilized by the enzyme here to create a molecule called citrate. Talk about that in a sec. So what do we need to do? We need to lose a carbon and we lose that carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. We need to gain a CoA. And in addition to this, we need to take an NAD plus and we need to turn it into an NADH plus hydrogen ions. Now this is probably the most important step or steps in the Krebs cycle and cellular respiration. Let's talk about this for two seconds. What is happening in this process? Well, ultimately NAD plus steals hydrogen from these carbon molecules. How does it occur? What is hydrogen? Hydrogen is the first atom on the periodic table. It is made up simply of a positive proton in its core and a negative electron flying around the outside. That's hydrogen. You can see it's neutral because the positive proton is balanced by the negative electron. Now, if I take NAD plus and I steal a hydrogen, I'm simply turning NAD plus into NADH plus. Because it's neutral and it started with a positive, it's still gonna retain that positive. So let's steal one more hydrogen, but this time let's just pluck the electron from it and keep that. If I do that, it then becomes NADH and all I'm left with is a positive proton. Now another way that you can write a positive proton is H plus. So if I steal two hydrogen from a molecule, I get NADH plus H plus. That H plus we know is what makes something acidic. Beautiful. So what we're doing effectively is NAD plus is stealing two hydrogen. It takes a whole hydrogen with the positive and the negative, and it takes one more hydrogen, but in actual fact just plucks the electron off it and leaves the positive proton out in the solution. That's what this equation is saying. You must remember that because that means this molecule here is carrying hydrogens and it's carrying electrons, which we'll be using in the electron transport chain. Here's an important point that no one ever talks about. To play around with these carbons and to produce carbon dioxide here, we need a vitamin B derivative called thiamine pyrophosphate. Thiamine 
pyrophosphate, also known as TPP. Thiamine pyrophosphate is a derivative of vitamin B1. So you need vitamin B1 for pyruvate to go to acetyl-CoA. Coenzyme A, for that to snap on, we need another B vitamin derivative called pantothenic acid. Pantothenic acid. Pantothenic acid is actually a vitamin B5 derivative. So we need vitamin B5 here. In addition to that, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which is what NAD is, that is a derivative of niacin. Niacin is vitamin B3. So simply in this one step, going from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, we need three B vitamins. This is the reason why our B vitamin complex is important for cellular respiration. Now, we haven't spoken about the enzyme here. The enzyme in this process is actually called pyruvate dehydrogenase. And we know it's gonna be a dehydrogenase because when you transform NAD plus to NADH or FAD into FADH2, it's gonna be a dehydrogenase enzyme. So now we've got acetyl-CoA. Two carbons, one CoA enters the mitochondria and what happens is the acetyl-CoA, the two carbon will bind to a four carbon molecule. This four carbon molecule is called oxaloacetate, sometimes written as OAA and create a six carbon molecule. Two plus four equals six. This is called citrate. And in this process, we obviously lose that CoA. We don't need it anymore. I told you CoA is required to help move carbon uh, molecules around the place so they can be utilized by their enzymes. So we lose that CoA. And when we lose a CoA, we usually use a synthase or a synthetase, and in this Point here, it's gonna be citrate synthase. That's the enzyme that we use to snap acetyl-CoA together with oxaloacetate to form our six carbon molecule citrate. Citrate needs to rearrange itself. So we rearrange some carbon atoms, we keep it as a six carbon molecule, and because we're rearranging it, we call it iso, because it's changed, iso citrate. And the way we rearrange it is we lose some water in the process, then we gain some water in the process, and we use an enzyme called aconitase to do this whole thing. Aconitase. Now we have isocitrate. Isocitrate, the six carbon molecule, needs to turn into a five carbon molecule called alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha keto Glutarate. So we lose a carbon. How do you think we lose that carbon? We lose that carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Now the enzyme that does this is called isocitrate dehydrogenase. I'm gonna write that down. What does that tell you? Isocitrate dehydrogenase. I told you something about dehydrogenases. They're used any time we're gonna be using NAD plus or FAD to steal hydrogen and electrons, and that's what's happening here. NAD plus turns into NADH plus a free proton in the solution. So now we've got alpha ketoglutarate, a five carbon molecule. It needs to turn into a four carbon molecule, gonna lose a carbon again, and gain a CoA. So I think I've seen this before. If we lose a carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, but we gain a CoA here, that looks very much like what's happening here with the pyruvate dehydrogenase. That's exactly what's happening. We're using another dehydrogenase here, and we also turn NAD plus into NADH. So same thing, NAD plus going to NADH plus hydrogen ion, so it's a dehydrogenase. What do you think it's called? Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Now look, again, remember, we're using B vitamins here, right? We're using a B vitamin here, B3 derivative there. We're using, for coenzyme A, we need to use B5 
pentothenic acid. We need to use B1, thiamine pyrophosphate here, B3 again. So look how important the B vitamins are in their derivatives just in the Krebs cycle. So now we've got this molecule here, which we haven't spoken about what it's called. Alpha ketoglutarate, once it loses a carbon, gains a CoA, it's called succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA needs to pop that CoA off to simply turn into something called succinate. And in this process of popping that CoA off, it actually releases a little bit of energy. And in this process of releasing that energy, we can actually turn either ADP into ATP or GDP into GTP. Again, just another energy molecule. But think about it, if that GTP has a phosphate, it might be able to just give that phosphate to ADP to now create ATP. So we can create ATP in this process. A little bit of uh, inorganic phosphate is added in this process too. Now because we lost a CoA here, like we lost a CoA here, I said it's either a synthase or a synthetase. Here it's a synthetase, so it's succinyl CoA synthetase. Succinyl CoA synthetase. Now we're left with succinate. So here's the thing. Succinate turns into fumarate, which turns into malate, which turns into oxaloacetate. Succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate. All right. So to go, and they're all four carbon molecules here. So what's happening in this process? So to go from succinate to fumarate, what we need to do is steal some more electrons and steal some more hydrogen ions. How do we do that? Well, this time we're not stealing it using NAD+, we're stealing it using FAD. Now, there's no plus here, so we're stealing two hydrogen, right? So FADH, that's what we're creating, two, because we're stealing two hydrogen. So we go from FAD to FADH2, and the enzyme that we're using is another dehydrogenase, like I said, called succinate dehydrogenase. Now we've got fumarate. Fumarate turns into malate using an enzyme called fumarase. Fumarase, and in doing so, it adds a little bit of water. Now to go from malate to oxaloacetate, we use an enzyme called malate dehydrogenase, malate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase tells you it's either going to use NAD plus or FAD. In this case, it's NAD plus again, forming NADH plus hydrogen ions. And now we're back to the oxaloacetate. So what have we done? Just in the Krebs, let's not focus on this part here. What have we created? Remember, we have two pyruvate from one glucose. So simply one glucose molecule created two pyruvate, which created two acetyl-CoA, which has created two of everything. So let's have a look. Let's first have a look at carbon dioxide. We've got two there, because remember, two of everything. Two, four, that's it, four. So we created four carbon dioxide in the Krebs cycle. Let's have a look now. NADH, two four, six. We created six NADH. What about FADH? Two. Two of them. Two FADH. Two. And what about ATP directly? Two. Two ATP. So what we've created just in the Krebs cycle is four carbon dioxide, jump into the bloodstream, breathe it out, no problem. But we've created these hydrogen and ele electron carriers. So these are carrying, remember, hydrogen ions and electrons. This is what we need for the next step, which is the electron transport chain and ATP directly, which we can use to produce, well, to do work, basically. So a, a final point. While this is the Krebs cycle in its most direct process, something that you should probably understand is that you can actually feed things into the Krebs cycle and take things out at different areas. So for example, you can feed amino acids in 
to the Krebs cycle or change some of these uh, substrates uh, into amino acids. So for example, alpha ketoglutarate can turn into various amino acids and various amino acids can turn into it. Same down here with the succinate, some, same with other different areas, you can add feed in and remove amino acids. That's a really important point, amino acids can feed in and out of the Krebs cycle. If we look at fatty acids as a potential energy source, we can feed fatty acids into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA can actually turn into fatty acids and fatty acids can turn into it. So here's where fatty acids can come in. Now, importantly, and I'm gonna do a whole video on this, but this is an important process. What if we don't have any glucose? So somebody has intentionally starved themselves of glucose, maybe Atkins diet, or maybe they're doing something where they just wanna eat fats for whatever reason that may be. They ingest all these fats, but there's no glucose. So what does that mean? Well, it means that's not happening. That's not happening, right? Oxaloacetate actually has the ability to jump out, turn into malate, and turn into glucose. Oxaloacetate, my point, is can ultimately turn back into glucose. So if you don't have any glucose in the body, the body wants it so much that it pulls oxaloacetate out to turn into glucose. Now, if you don't have any oxaloacetate here, right? Let's just say this is this part here, it's gone, right? The acetyl-CoA has nothing to bind to. Now remember, I said that fatty acids, if you're ingesting fats but you're not ingesting glucose, they can turn into acetyl-CoA. So we've still got acetyl-CoA feeding into the Krebs but no oxaloacetate for it to bind to. So this process doesn't happen. So acetyl-CoA simply accumulates. And when you accumulate acetyl-CoA, it snaps together to form ketones. This is, what is it? Ketogenesis. So the ketones can then jump out into the bloodstream, go to the brain where the brain has plenty of oxaloacetate. Now this, this is happening in the liver, remember? The liver. The brain is not making ketones, the liver is. So the oxaloacetate isn't jumping out to create glucose in the brain, the oxaloacetate is fine in the brain. So once the acetyl-CoA in the form of ketones, jumps into the brain, it can turn back to acetyl-CoA and undergo the Krebs cycle. That's how the brain uses ketones for energy. Anyway, that's an aside. I hope that you enjoyed this video of the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.